Thank you. Hi, um, as I was introduced, my name is Melissa Arberly. I am the Labor Relations Compliance Specialist and Title IX Investigator, which means I work in both the Human Resources Office and the Office of Inclusion. I know you guys have been here a long time, so I'll try and make this as quick as possible. Alrighty, uh, just to go through some quick overview uh, slides. The mission of uh, University of Toledo is to improve the human condition. Uh, we try and do that by advancing knowledge uh, in learning and discovery and uh, creating a diverse student workforce. Uh, some of the core values of UT are compassion, professionalism, and respect. This is imp uh, especially important when we get later on uh, in some of the slides with harassment. Uh, some other of the core values for UT uh, are to create diversity, integrity, and teamwork. Alrighty, so how is uh, diversity work in the University of Toledo? Uh, we have several, obviously, official uh, university documents, our mission, our values, the strategic plan, um, and our university policies. I'm not sure if you've uh, been told yet, but there's a university policy website. I encourage you to go on it, uh, look. I'm going to be referencing it several times during the presentation. Uh, there are also several offices and trainings that we go through to try and create a more diverse student uh, culture and uh, workforce, including uh, some cultural competence training. Uh, there's mandatory diversity training for both staff and faculty, and um, as well for our student workers. Uh, we also have sexual harassment advisors. That's me. Uh, there's several other individuals who work with us, and um, I believe Shanda Gore also talked with you earlier. She's with the Office of Equity and Diversity, and then uh, the Office of Inclusion, which is where I work. So what does the Office of Inclusion do? Uh, we deal with retaliation claims, discrimination claims. That includes both age, uh, race, national origin, um, gender. We deal with sexual harassment, both on the medical campus and here at the University of Toledo. Uh, we also do ADA uh, investigations and work with uh, Tony Howard often uh, to complete those investigations. Uh, Kevin West is also the Title IX officer, uh, and I am the Title IX investigator. So I'm going to explain a little bit of what Title IX here is in a minute, because we have several new uh, developments that have happened over the last two or three years. And then finally, we review all of the uh, employment actions to make sure there's a diverse workforce, to make sure we're not discriminating uh, right before we hire any individuals into our organization. All righty. So what is Title IX? Um, Title IX was enacted in 1972. Most people, when they think of Title IX, they think of athletics. They think we've got to have so many sports for women and so many sports for men. Um, recently, this has been expanded upon uh, by the White House and the Department of Education in 2011. Now, not only is it applying uh, just to discrimination in general, but we're also focusing on sexual assault and sexual harassment in uh, Universities. You may have seen uh, a lot of it's been on CNN, uh, MSN, the news recently talking about different colleges that are under investigation because they ignored different reports of sexual assault on campus. So what does uh, the University of Toledo have to do? Uh, once a sexual assault has been reported or sexual harassment, we have 60 days uh, to investigate. So let's say one of your students, um, you're TAing a class, they come and they tell you of a sexual assault that happened to them on campus. From that point, we have 60 days. Now, it might take a week or two to actually reach our office, but we have a very limited timeline to investigate, and then from there to sanction, uh, do any sanctions, any recommendations uh, for uh, the individual that, was, um, that committed the assault and for uh, the potential complainant. Uh, so some of these steps that we immediately do, let's say the assault occurred within their dorm uh, and both the complainant and the respondent are both uh, in the same dorm room. We will try and move the respondent or move the complainant if they're the ones that want to move uh, to a different dorm to, so that they can feel safe and um, feel respected within their community. Or let's say they're in the same classes. Obviously, you don't want to be seeing that person every day when you go to class. We will try and rearrange their schedule for them to a class that would make it more accommodating for them. All righty. Uh, then just talking about briefly sexual violence and hostile uh, work environment. 
Uh, sexual harassment creates a hostile environment if the conduct interferes both with your work and with your learning environment. So let's say um, there's been, uh, you've been sexually harassed and it's starting to affect your grades. This is something that we uh, in the Office of Inclusion can help out with. We can uh, talk with your professors, we can um, work with uh, the student and um, anybody else that's involved to try and ease the situation. Alrighty. And there doesn't need to be a huge pattern. One incident of sexual assault is enough, uh, depending on what the situation is, to create that hostile environment. And then finally, as I said before, uh, the school has to take immediate action. We can't wait till uh, we see what's going on. There's no, um, like, we'll, we don't have to figure out the truth. We have to take immediate action uh, in order for there to be any sort of um, investigation. And then obviously, like I said before, make uh, reasonable steps to identify, prevent, and uh, remediate. So some of the ways we're trying to prevent this in the future, um, Title IX is also requiring us not only to take uh, responding action, but to take future uh, preventative measures. Uh, one way we are doing this is we're coming up with bullying training, which all staff, students, TAs, graduate students, everybody is going to have to go through, as well as bystander training. Uh, bystander training is uh, pretty much if, let's say you're at a party and you see uh, a girl being, or even a guy, being sexually harassed, you can say, you jump in and you say, you know what, uh, maybe let's try and uh, go play beer pong or go do something else, trying to divert the situation. Uh, and there's going to be lots of uh, bystander training that's going on. Um, one of our main themes is, is going to be if you see something, say something. Alrighty, uh, and then talking about reporting. We have different forms of reporting um, and different areas it can be reported to. Uh, there's both informal and formal reporting. Uh, informal may, uh, you call up the Office of Inclusion, call me or Kevin West and say, look, this is something that's happened. Uh, this person has come forward to me. I'm not sure yet if they want to file a formal report, but we will obviously try and meet both with you and um, the complainant to try and go over, see if they want to file a formal report. Um, formal reporting, we have a form, it's the harassment form, You'll, you can see it on our website. Um, and then from there, if there's a formal report, it does go through the student conduct process. Because we work very closely with the Office of Student Affairs to try and resolve any sort of issue. So uh, there's a list of individuals that it can be reported to. Um, often we get reports from the counseling center. Sometimes these reports may be anonymous, uh, and from there, we try and resolve it to the best of our ability, but we, uh, if the individual says that they do not want to give up their name, they don't have to. Oh, and then um, this kind of goes into the next one. Uh, in, incidents can occur both on and off campus. Uh, so we, like I said, we try and work with both student affairs. Uh, we have uh, representatives at the YWCA who we work with. Uh, so they will, if let's say a report goes to um, TPD instead of to campus police, we are working with um, police stations around the community and if they receive a complaint from a university student or graduate student or uh, whatever it may be, we work with them to try and uh, resolve on campus as well. All right. Uh, and then, like I said before, uh, uh, the sexual harassment policy, it doesn't just talk about sexual harassment, it also talks about other types of harassment on campus. It can be found on our University of Toledo inclusion website. And I do recommend looking at it, it's a very helpful policy, kind of explains the overall procedure. All righty, uh, so I'm gonna click through these really quick. There's a different, there's verbal, nonverbal, and obviously physical ways that there can be sexual harassment. All of these, the reason they're up there is because over the last couple of years, we've seen these come up. So we obviously put them up here to try and educate. Um, if you see something, report it to the University of Toledo Office of Inclusion. Uh, for instance, um, let me see if I can see one that's recent. Uh, repeatedly asking someone out who is not interested. Uh, we've had that happen more recently. Uh, they would follow them around to uh, their different places of work, their different classes, constantly asking them out. Uh, under the sexual harassment policy, this follows under stalking. So we included it in the verbal warning signs. Let me 
Again, these are more uh, verbal warning signs. Um, referring to any woman as babe, honey, hunk, uh, inappropriate, please don't do it. All right, let's go to some of the not verbal. All right, here are some of the nonverbal warning signs. Uh, again, like I said before, these are signs that we've seen recently, so we've included them on here. Um, displaying sexually suggestive visuals such as drawings, pornography, screensavers, calendars, cartoons. Um, maybe you think your screensaver is appropriate, but if you walk by and it's something that someone else would, like a lady on a car, is an example we've had recently. Um, you may want to take that down and just kind of go through your stuff and make sure anything that you would have a bystander walk by and say, that's a little strange and inappropriate. You want to make sure it's off of your computer. All righty, here are the last nonverbals. Uh, one I want to particularly point out is um, social media, emails, text message, um, and not just Facebook anymore. We are dealing with complaints uh, leading from Twitter, Instagram. Um, I think there's another one that's been even more recent than that. Uh, but there are different UT crushes, UT confessions, Twitter hashtag things that um, are coming forth as complaints because while the poster may think they're anonymous and can um, use a different screen name, because it's through uh, UT, it does still fall under our liability. We still, we still have to investigate it and have to uh, have it removed from that social media website. All right, here are some of the more physical warning signs. Most of these are pretty straightforward. You would think at least that you wouldn't want to do these. All righty. And then like I said before, off-campus conduct can still uh, make a difference uh, and we still have to investigate it, whether you're at Jake's Saloon or at Chasers or wherever the bar may be, uh, because you're a university official and maybe there's a university student involved, we still have to investigate it, not only for your safety, but also um, to make sure that any accommodations we can provide are there. Uh, even though it does take place off campus, we have to make sure that we're providing some safety to our, our students, which is our number one priority. Alrighty, and then just basic overview, I'm not going to go into a legal lecture, but the two main types of sexual harassment are quid pro quo, so um, basically uh, this for that, let's say a uh, basic example is a teacher says, I'll raise your grade if you have sex with me. It's an inappropriate and an example of quid pro quo behavior. A hostile environment, this applies to both work environment and learning environment. Uh, if an individual feels like they are being sexually harassed and this affects their learning, that is a hostile learning environment. Alrighty, and then just to kindly, um, I, I know you've already been uh, talked to about discrimination a little bit, so just to tap on it a little bit more. Um, we do investigate any discrimination claims. This can be through um, employment actions such as recruitment, hiring, promotions, but also has to do with education. Um, if this happens in one of your classrooms and you feel there's discrimination, it is something that we do investigate and we work um, with the ADA office and the ADA coordinator to uh, make sure there's no disability discrimination. Alrighty, and then just another overview. Uh, actions based solely on race, gender, um, religion, ethnicity are, are subject to university investigation because they can open us up to liability. Um, any complaints, report to the Office of Inclusion. And then um, faculty should make an attempt to create a classroom environment that's inclusive and welcoming to all students. And then this is something I like to touch on, non-retaliation policy. We have often found that perhaps somebody didn't violate the sexual harassment harassment policy, but then after they found out that they're under investigation, they go and they harass that person who filed the complaint. That violates the non-retaliation policy and they can be found liable under that. Um, Often cases, we um, will investigate this following the harassment case. 
and you have every, the complainant has every right to file a complaint, whether you're a faculty member, staff, or student. It does not matter, you have that right. And then this is just another um, definition of retaliation, uh, whether it be in the workplace or in the learning environment. And then practical application. So uh, let's say you offer a pop quiz, um, and then after passing out the quiz, a student announces uh, that they are unable to take the pop quiz because they need to be accommodated because of their disability. Uh, one of the things that you can do is um, pull the student aside and uh, offer to give the pop quiz to the uh, Office of Accessibility, and they can take it there. So that way they're not um, adversely affected by the pop quiz. All righty, uh, this is one. I know it's simple things that you wouldn't really even think about, but it has happened before, so that's why we talk about it. Uh, so you're teaching a statistics course and discussing different probabilities, so you decide to break up into groups. Uh, the professor decides to break the groups up by race. It's not appropriate, uh, violates our discrimination policy, and we would be investigating that situation. So obviously not a good idea. And then finally, uh, going back to our sexual harassment, uh, again, this is another situation we had recently in a French class. Uh, they were doing a foreign language course and um, talking about different conversations. And the conversation was, uh, do you have many boyfriends? I bet you have a lot of boyfriends. And do you have a big bed? Not appropriate, no matter what language you're in. So it's not something I recommend. All right, and I know I blew through that. I wanted to make sure that you had uh, some time for lunch. So. Any other questions? <laughs>